Yeah, hi. My name is Sanjay Mukhopadhyay. I'm a lung pathologist in Cleveland. And uh, Matthew, do you want to... Um, yeah, sure. My name is Matt Cicchini. I'm a pathologist here in London, Ontario, Canada. All right. So the idea behind this whole thing is to have a little discussion, kind of like a car talk, but for lungs. So it'll be like lung talk. And we'll just <laughs> talk about things in the lungs and thorax. Does that sound good to you, Matt? That sounds like a lot of fun. Let's do it. All right. So we are obviously looking at a thymus here. Oh. And on the left-hand side, I have a HNA of the thymus. On the right-hand side, I have one of my favorite stains. And I feel a very underappreciated stain, Matt. I don't know if you feel the same way. TDT. Underappreciated. Because I, why I say that is you, I often get cases, consultation cases of thymomas, where people have done every stain in the, mm. under the sun except a TDT. Yeah. I'm like, oh man, that would have really <laughs> helped. It would have helped to have that. Yeah. All right, so we're going to talk about this and I'm going to kind of concentrate on this little doggy face nice. here and that little doggy face that you have on that. And I feel that it's, um, what you can see even at this mag is that this thing has a dark area and a light area. Mm -hmm. And of course the dark areas are cortex and the light areas are, how do you say it, do you, do you call it medulla or medulla? What's the? Uh, I call it medulla. Medulla, okay. Yeah. What do you call it? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the right pronunciation is, but yeah. uh, okay, I, I'll call it medulla like you do, okay? Okay, sounds good. So these light areas are medulla and the dark areas are cortex. And if I zoom into this area a little bit where the doggy face is, one thing that becomes apparent, at least to me, is that the doggy face areas are the areas with the Hassel's corpuscles. Yeah. Could, you, could you tell us the, what, what are Hassel's corpuscles there, Sanjay? Yeah, so these things are little, I almost think of them as little squamous, bits of squamous epithelium because they, ex they look like squamous epithelium. They stain like squamous epithelium with keratin, CK5-6, P63, P40. And then as you go closer into it, it really is like a little bit of squamous epithelium yeah. that's become slightly cystic and accumulated a bit of debris inside it. And of course that varies, sometimes they look more solid like these ones in here, but they are, that's what they really are, is little bits of squamous epithelium within the thymus. And that's what the corpuscle is. I don't know, Matt, do you have a little different conceptualization of what these- that, That's exactly how I think of it as well. And uh, these little kind of squamous type islands, I think of like an island in the sun. Yes, exactly. So let, let me now bring it to the TDT so you can see the same doggy face in the on the T. So here's the little doggy face there. Hmm. We're going higher. And you can see in the doggy face that all the TDT is outside the doggy face, right? So it's up there. All these and, and the other thing it's important to mention here is that the TDT stains the lymphocytes and not the epithelial cells. So the Hassel's corpuscles, which I am now circling, one of them is not TDT positive. And same thing here. And in fact, the vast majority of cells in the medullary, medullary area is not, in the medulla is not TDT positive. There are very few TDT positive lymphocytes. Let me point at one here. Maybe that guy is a TDT positive lymphocyte. Mm -hmm. So in general, the normal thymus is divided into a TDT rich cortical portion and the TDT poor, but epithelium rich um, medullary portion. Um, which I find interesting because people kind of try to divide thymomas along these lines, right? So they yes. try to say the Bs look more like the cortical portion and the yes. As look more like the uh, medullary portion. Any thoughts about that, Matt? Do you like that kind of con concept? Yeah, I think it conceptually works, but I think uh, as we know in practice, it can be really hard to kind of uh, get things in those categories because there's so much overlap and it's, um, I know there can be a lot of challenge and frustration in trying to fit these sometimes you know, square things into round holes and things like that. I think it can be yeah. a challenging endeavor at times. Is there anything about thymic, um, you know, histology, thymic architecture that you would like to talk about here? Yeah, or so I think one thing is at low power, just how much tissue that is here. I think that that's important because um, I, I assume this is a younger patient. Um, um, yes, the... a younger patient, a, you know, child, um, yeah. where you would expect the thymus to be still juicy looking instead of atrophic like it is in adults. Yeah. 
No, I think I think that's good. And then I think the other thing I often find useful is that the kind of the location of these more uh, medullary areas that they're kind of more in the central um, aspects of it. Yeah. And they're kind of not really um, stuck off the periphery because I find sometimes the distinction between B1 thymoma and normal thymus can sometimes be a little bit challenging. Yeah. Um, um, and kind of the location of those medullary areas I find sometimes helps me. Mm -hmm. It is looking at that kind of low power architecture. Yes, I will say that another thing that strikes me at low mag is it, it sort of is lobulated, right? Like it's yeah. broken into almost like the lung is broken into yeah. lobules by interlobular septa. This thing is too, but the septa are not broad, yeah. like they're not broad fibrous septa. And I think that's a useful thing to know. Yeah, they're they're thin. I think that that's a characteristic thing between thymomas and yeah. Because I look, you know, sometimes the the question in difficult, challenging consults is: is this thymic hyperplasia slash normal thymus versus thymoma? Yeah. And I find like the thing that I'm really looking for is the fibrous septa. I mean, I yeah. really lean on that heavily as a sign that something is truly a you know, thymoma versus something else in the differential. And I think they can be helpful too in small biopsy specimens, right? If you have a small biopsy, but you have a nice area of fibrous septa that you get in that core, I think yes. that, that can be a really helpful clue that you're dealing with more of a thymoma. That's true. Also that these things can be at, at low magnification, at least sort of mistaken for lymph node tissue with germinal yeah. centers, right? They look like, I've, I've seen yeah. at least in frozen section practice, you know, this, the surgeon comes to you with a rule out parathyroid mm -hmm. and you're about to say oh parath you know hypercellular parathyroid tissue and you go no this isn't this is a lymph node yeah, yeah. and you get rid of it and then um, somebody comes and tells you oh, that wasn't lymph node that was thymus <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know or yeah. you're the one telling them that was thymus yeah. but i find that that is a, a very easy uh, thing to miss mm -hmm. you know get mistaken you know, thymus versus lymph node yeah. and of course one of my my friends my neighbors actually uh, jesse mckinney once told me that it, it is a pitfall that you can actually see these things, these Hassel's corpuscles in what looks like a lymph node background mm. and then mistake that as a metastatic squamous cell carcinoma. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, really, that's really true. If yeah, you definitely. didn't have it the context, you could clearly go down the tubes on, on this. You might think this little squamous nest is malignant and why else would be epithelium be in a lymphoid background? Yeah. Uh, so it's really worth thinking about that. That's, that's that's a great point, and I think maybe it's it's worthwhile talking about some reasons why the a patient might have a normal thymus taken out. Um, yeah, um, let me. Let, well, one reason that I see commonly in practice is that um, at least in children is Down syndrome. You know, I find mm -hmm. that that is a thing that uh, Down syndrome children are having cardiac surgery. You know, for cardiac mm -hmm. um, uh, valvular abnormalities, and then they have this thymus, relatively big thymus, and they take those out for some reason. I'm, I'm yeah. not sure exactly why, but okay. those get taken out. Thymuses that are enlarged for any reason get taken out, you know, in, if they're incidentally enlarged or, or surgeons while doing a thoracic surgery or a, you know, some sort of cardiac or cardiovascular surgery, notice an enlarged thymus and tend to take them out. But to me, that is in children, the more common reason. I have yeah. to say that I don't see a lot of uh, pediatric surgery so yeah. for me, this is not a common thing. I don't know, Matt, what do you think is the, are the common reasons? For? Yeah, we don't see a ton of them either other than incidental things. Um, in an older population, we do see them for myasthenia gravis, um, um, taking out the thymic tissue, whether it's normal or hyperplastic or a thymoma, um, yes. kind of along that spectrum. We do see um, also cardiac surgery in, in, in older people too, when they'll take out a bit of tissue that's kind of in the surgical path that'll end up being normal thymic tissue, but it's, it's much more atrophic than this. Yep. Oh, can I mention one thing here, Matt, which course, I, really, yeah. I was reading it yesterday and I, I thought it was fascinating. Mm. It's actually very, very basic, but I thought it's still worth mentioning yeah. here. You know, I was reading a really nice review article in, in the COVID, it was about COVID, but it was talking about immunity in general, you know, it just immune cells and immunity in general. And one thing they talked about was why T cells and B cells are called T cells and B cells. No, right, so no. the B cells comes from the bursa of Fabricius, which is the bone marrow equivalent. Yeah. Um, but it, the T cells are actually named after the thymus. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so the T is as a thymic cells. Oh, cool. And, and it's because the thymus is where the T cells do yeah. all their, you know, the, the complex yeah. thing of um, whether a T cell is self-recognizing and needs to get yeah. weeded out or is a true, you know, is recognizing true foreign antigens and needs to be kept. 
I think all that complex immunity happens in the thymus. Yeah. When and I was so in... underlying all this, uh, you know, fascinating architecture is even more fascinating, yeah. you know, a biology, which of course we don't see on a light microscopic level, but there's a lot going on here in this organ. Yeah. When I was in medical school, they, they taught us that the thymus was the T cell university and that's, uh, it's where the, uh, the T cells went for their higher education. Uh, and so <laughs> that's, it's, right. uh, that's the way that's I've right. always remembered it. That's right. I think it's worth pointing out here once before we stop this section is yeah. that this thymus is typical of a child, you know, of a, yeah. and the younger the child, the more likely or like likely to have a normal thymus like this. But as time goes by, this thymic tissue disappears mm -hmm. and is all that's left is little, you know, uh, pieces at the edges. And um, those pieces are, are really very atrophic in the sense that yeah. the lymphoid and epithelial structures are very little is left of them. And th what's left is really adipose tissue. Yeah. So you've got big hunks of adipose tissue with very small pieces of like true thymus, which is called yeah. atrophic thymic tissue. And if you're in an, if you practice in an adult you know, setting like mine, mostly seeing adult patients, you'll never see this kind of thymus in your practice. Oh, you true, only yeah. see atrophic thymus, right? Yeah. So that's maybe during one of our subsequent sessions, we'll show atrophic thymus and what that looks like. That makes sense. And then if a clinician asked that this was a, like true thymic hyperplasia, maybe we can just discuss um, how we would sort that out in this case. Yes, great, great point. So true thymic hyperplasia, I'll tell you, Matt, the funny thing is that's one of the few reasons that I have an AFIP fascicle on the mediastinum. <laughs> yeah, is me too. The, <laughs> is the, the AFIP fascicle on mediastinum yeah. has a table yeah. and that table has thymic weights in it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's really the only thing I ever yeah. use it for me is too. that that table is so helpful because it gives you the, the range of normal thymic weights for a particular yeah. age. So let's say this was, I don't know, 13 or 14, you would look in there and say for, 10, for an age range of 10 to 15, the normal range is 75 to 100, let's say. Yeah. And let's say this one was 150, you'd say, oh, this is too much weight, yeah. that this is too heavy of a thymus for this age. And that would qualify for true thymic hyperplasia. So what it is essentially is histologically normal thymus, but just heavier yeah. than usual or more, more of the thymus than is usual for that age. So you really need to know the weight. And um, uh, that's why weights are so important when you're yeah. um, uh, grossing in thymic specimens. How do you approach cases where you don't have the weight? Like if you got a case in consultation that um, that unfortunately the weight wasn't recorded. Um, yeah, um, that is a tough I know it's a tough question. situation. And I, I don't really have a good answer for that either. Because yeah. you know, really without the weight, it's not really, in the cases I've had, it's been, you can raise it, but you can't really um, classify it. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I, I guess the thing you can do is bring it up and yeah. say that if this were exceeding the normal weight, yeah. This would be true thymic hyperplasia, but if it doesn't, it's you know normal thymus. Either way, it's benign. So yeah. maybe that's the way to bottom line. It. Oh, that, that's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is a great first start of the case, and maybe yeah. we'll keep going on the next ones. Great idea, Matt.